Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Joining me today is Paris Athena, creator of hashtag Black Tech Twitter and the founder of the Black Tech Pipeline. But before we begin, please subscribe. Hi everyone, this is Jason and welcome back to the channel. Joining me today is Paris. She is a, a developer and a programmer and also the founder of Black Tech Twitter and also the Black Tech Pipeline. Paris, thank you for doing this with me. Welcome to the show. Thank you, I'm excited to be on. So. I wanted to ask you a couple of questions about um, the developer space, um, tech in general, um, and also uh, specifically about uh, black, te black tech Twitter. Um, I mean, we all know about black Twitter. We all know about crypto Twitter. We all know about tech Twitter. But you, you made up a hashtag that reflects both um, tech and people of color. So yeah. what was the idea behind doing that? Um, so the, I, I put out a tweet really, it was super unintentional. I was just, I, when I got on Twitter, I noticed that there were a lot of black developers, which was shocking to me because I don't ever see that at work or when I go to conferences and meetups in the tech space. Um, so when I got on Twitter, I noticed, oh, there's like quite a few on here. That's interesting. So uh, I like, like you said, black Twitter exists. So I, was, I put out a tweet and I was like, what does black Twitter in tech look like? Okay. And I was just expecting a response from like the few followers I had. I think I had like 500 followers or something. Um, and the response was not what I expected. I mean, people from literally all over the world who are black in tech were responding with their pictures and um, what they did in the tech space. And it was like phenomenal. So when you first got into, well, what was it that got you into coding and programming to begin with? Like, was there a, um, something in particular that you saw that you liked and that you, you thought I'd like to do that? Yeah. Um, so I had been hearing about like the word coding. I've been hearing it for a while. Then I was a wax specialist, um, at European wax center in Boston. And um, I had a client who kept coming in who she was an engineer and she kept telling me like, you should really get into coding. It's so easy. And I was like, eh. like sitting behind a computer all day just doesn't sound fun to me. Uh, but then this was also like, then I started noticing that Obama was really pushing STEM and steam and talking about coding and technology. And I was like, huh, okay. Um, and when I, I just went to my brother's school, he was having like a school function and I came across his principal and I noticed like all over the walls, there were things just about like technology and coding and robots and whatever. So, you know, I went up to his principal and I said, Hey, you know, what's coding? Why are kids coding? It seems like it's something college students should be learning. You know, it just seems difficult. And he was like, uh, no, there are different programs that allow kids to learn how to code. Um, and they have to because we are in a technology driven era like you know everything's being automated you need to have some type of skill set that's going to allow you to keep up and right was, right i thought about that and i was like you know what that makes sense because as a waxer i was losing my clientele to laser hair removal which permanently removes hair which means they don't have to see me anymore which means i lose money um so i was like oh gosh i like i really am being replaced by machines so um, I was also in school at the time and I, you know, I think that week I went to my college counselor and I was like, hey, uh, you know, what's coding? How can I learn to code? And she told me about this program called Resilient Coders, which was a boot camp that taught people of color to code, but they also paid people of color to learn to code. Um, so I was like, oh, that's cool. So, you know, I ended up kind of going into that program. So when you after you did that and you saw that it was something that you'd be interested in um when did you decide to become a developer and when you decided to become a developer did you want to go just front end back end full stack um how did you make your decision yeah i actually didn't make my decision at all so i for that the boot camp that i went into i had to go to a hackathon to, they would tell us what the program would consist of, what you're getting into, um, and they choose people selectively. Like, not everyone gets into the program. So I wanted to just find out a little bit about it, and they were teaching front-end web development, so HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, and I was, I was like, oh, this 
this is kind of cool. Coding's kind of fun because we were doing really simple tasks like turning a circle red. Like it was something really simple. I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Um, you know, so I, they ended up choosing me to take, to participate in the program. So I quit my job. I went in and, um, you know, they, that's, that was just their curriculum, teaching HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I didn't have a choice in choosing, but also I didn't know what else existed. I, I was not like tech savvy at all. I didn't know coding existed. I didn't know front end and back end were a thing. Like I just wasn't aware. Um, so that's what, that's just what I got into. And I'm happy I did. I really like front end. Yeah. I, I just recently got into Python. So, um, it, for me, coding and programming has always been intimidating because I see the people with the screens full of all the, yep. you know, looks like yep. the matrix <laughs> and, yeah. uh, it, it was intimidating at first, but you know, a friend of mine, um, uh, Keith Mackay, he's the, uh, developer behind escape qr it's a uh, bitcoin lightning network game oh, cool. okay um and he was telling me about python and you know that it's it's you know it, it has its learning uh curve but it's not as difficult as others because it's all it's word based yeah that's what i heard i was like you should learn i was told after getting into tech they're like you know beginners should learn either python or javascript and i was like oh okay yeah. Well, and you know, I, it's not as hard as I thought it would be, but it's hard enough to be challenging. Right. And, you know, I think more people would do with that challenge because if you think about it, once you know one of these languages, you could pretty much get a job pretty easily, actually. Yeah, yeah it's true. Yeah. Um, but you stuck with it. So what was it about programming that that kept your interest How, what did what was it that fascinated you um well I love the fact that like it proved me wrong so for me I thought programming consisted of like tons of math and science and things I wouldn't be able to comprehend because my brain just doesn't function that way um but then I came to realize I was like oh wait like coding is actually really artistic because you're taking this idea and you're bringing it to life through code you know, and you're, you're speaking to this computer and you're, you know, you're building and you're making things function. And it was just all, it was interesting to me. It was very different. It was a different way of thinking. I always had to uh, learn something new. I was never bored. I was always challenged. Um, and that's like an environment I can thrive in. Um, but I think the what I really love is that it's super creative and people wouldn't think of that. Right. Yeah. You'd be surprised the the even as a beginner, you'd be surprised what you can do once you learn a few you know, right. code, you know. Um so let's I wanted to ask you a couple of questions about uh, so we see more people of color, women, um, going into the tech space. And that's a that's a wonderful thing. Quite frankly, I think the reason why we have so many issues with technology now is because it's a very closed system yes. um, not system but a, a mindset maybe yeah. that's the best way to put it yeah. you know like with um, AI and facial rec recognition if you're using that for if you're programming AI to identify a criminal you're not going to program it to identify a criminal that looks like you right. and I think that's why you have uh, a need for diversity in the mm -hmm. space and also we need, it, it can't, it's not just a color thing. We, we, like I have nieces and I want them to get into this space. And right. the reason why is because not only is it great for a job, it's great for your financial future. Oh yeah. So I, I wanted to get your opinion on that about, about the, the lack of diversity and also how we can grow the diversity. What, what do you think? Right. Um, yeah, the lack of diversity, like, so, like, tech is just full of, honestly, like, white men, right, um, and so the, the side effect of that is that you're building, you know, you're building products that are really made for white men, you're not, um, oh, you know, you're not going to really understand a woman's needs. You're not going to understand a person of color's needs. You know, you're, you're not thinking about other 
what it's like to be in other people's shoes, I guess. Um, so like when it comes to things like um, AI and facial recognition, you know, you're building a machine to recognize your skin tone and, and maybe like the bulkiness of your hand. And, you know, you, you don't have like a woman's hand. You don't have um, like a black person's skin tone. Like this machine is only recognizing you. And so when you don't have people from different backgrounds getting their hands on these technologies and helping build them and keeping in mind, you know, all these other people and cultures coming from different backgrounds with different beliefs and lifestyles, like when you don't have that, your, your product is so limited. You're not reaching, you're not able to reach everyone, which means people are left out and they're, they're left behind. And no one wants to be left behind, you know? Um, right, so exactly. That's the problem. And I think thinking about getting more people into tech as in uh, the underrepresented people, as in people of color and women and so on. Um, it's again, I, I don't have the mindset of everyone, but thinking of myself, like I wouldn't, I didn't get into tech because I really thought it would consist of hardcore math and science and, and be boring. Like I, I, the thought of that just, I didn't want it. That's not how I thrive. Um, so I feel like maybe killing that misinterpretation of what tech is, um, like people need to know it's really creative. It's artistic. It's fun. Like it, it's a great career and you do make like really amazing money from it too. Um, and then you also need to keep in mind that this is again, you are living in an age where everything is technology driven and automated. Like you don't want to be left behind. Are you going to get a degree in something that is not going to suit you once you're out of college? Like will you be able to get a job. Will that job have been automated as well. You just don't know, you know, so you, you need to keep all of that in mind. Um, and, you know, even if you got a degree in computer science or something else that's actually in an industry that makes money, you know, make your money and then feed your passion with it, you know? And, and I mean, that's just the world. That's realistic thinking, you right. know? Yeah, I, I agree. Here, it's like, you know, I want to go to school for acting. And it's like, that's, I love that, you know? And it's like, it's gonna, it might be really hard to break into this industry. You might live a tough life of struggling, trying to make it, um, you know, or, or you can get a degree in, I don't know, something that's going to make you this money and you make that money, feed your passion, go on auditions while, you know, after work, like you just feed your passions with something that's going to sustain the lifestyle that you want at the end of the day. You right, know? exactly. Well, like for me, you know, I, I want to be a, a, a full-time writer and I want to be a full-time content creator. Well, mm -hmm. for, to be able to finance that, you need a job that can pay for everything else Exactly. So that it's not in the way when you want to do it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, the other thing, and it kind of leads into my next question, is, you know, you have people who just don't think about things like that, you know, like, and and it, my question becomes, how do we get people who would normally gravitate towards entertainment, sports, and things like that, mm -hmm. into this space? Because for one, I'm not very tall. So I, NBA is out of my, <laughs> that's not going to happen, right? Um, I'm, I mean, this is about as much acting as you're ever going to see out of me. <laughs> so the entertainment industry isn't going to happen. But I can code Python. You know, I can, I can tell people about, I don't know, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. It yeah. doesn't require me to have a certain stature to do. Right, exactly. I know. So, yeah. So when I think about that, I think, about the youth really because that's our future that's who we want to understand the importance you know of of this industry and why they should get into it so i feel like for me like my community is the black community so and i know that my community struggles with um resources and getting this information and having a quality education. Like I know my community, right? So I know their struggles. I know that if I want more of them to get into tech, they need to be aware of it, which means you need to go back into your community. You need to, you don't expect them to come to you. You need to go to them and let them know this exists. You can do it. 
I did it. I look like you. I come from the same background as you. You can do it. Like they need to see someone who looks like you. They, you know, they have a similar background. They understand your struggles and they still made it. Like that's important for people to see. And that's me speaking on for the black community. You know, anyone else can do this for whatever community they're fighting for or, you know, whatever. You, you just need to go back and bring awareness. So that's like the number one thing. Well, and it reminds me of that um, movie, Hidden Figures. You know, they were about to be um, basically taken over by computers. Right. And, oh, we don't need all these people to do this job. So we'll just get rid of them and this computer can do it. Well, how do you keep your job? You learn how to run that computer. Exactly. Right. right. And you just saved 30 jobs just, just by doing that, you know? Right. They went back. They went back, taught everyone how to uh, use those computers, and then exactly, they got to keep their jobs. Like, that's the thing. You got to go back to your community, teach them, you know, let them know this is the way the world's going. You got to learn this to keep up. You're going to be left behind. You don't want to be left behind. I know you have this passion over here, but if you get into this industry here, you can feed that passion. That's always how I like to explain it. Um, right. Yeah. Because exactly. It's scary. It's scary to know that you you literally can be replaced by a machine. You know, you have to keep up with what's up to date. Well, we and we have to, you know, it it's a sad fact that when these jobs go, they tend to cut at the bottom first, mm -hmm. and typically, black people are at the bottom of yep. a lot of these jobs. Exactly. And so what you need to, what we need to do is get ourselves from off of that level and get us into a position of more, it's not so easy to replace you. Right. Right. And then pass it on. You know, the, the next generation needs to know, you know, don't just give your kids a, a cell phone and a tablet, put something on there that'll teach them how to use that or program that phone right. or tablet, you know, and I then they can start making their own apps. Right. I think you really for the youth you need to relate you need to relate to the youth like when I was a teenager like a preteen or in that age like you know I didn't care I didn't care about those things I just wanted to have fun you know so I feel like you know if someone wants to be a writer and director for movies right you say oh cool imagine you made this app where you make um you know writer and directing easier and maybe you can you can build an app that allows you to do that from a cell phone imagine how many more people are going to be out there using your product and being able to make their dreams come true like you got to feed them that information to let them know you can still chase your passion but you can do it in a bunch of different ways and technology is definitely included you know building and producing so. right no that that's 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 very true because there's a book uh, by Isaiah Jackson called uh, Bitcoin and Black America. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's about how he got into cryptocurrency and, you know, and, and about its potential for us uh, financially. There is a, a code base beneath it. You know, there's C++, there's Python, there's um, uh, C, uh, and I want to say JavaScript under some of them. So you can still be in crypto and never look at a, a, the price of a coin. You can just build. Right. And you can do it from your house. You know, you don't have to, like a friend of mine, he created a cryptocurrency. He's put out this thing that people around the world can use. You know, right. it, it, your technology erases limitations. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. And, and I mean, that that kind of rolls into my, my next question about uh, the black tech pipeline. So when you came up with that site, um, uh, what was the idea just to showcase different people in tech or what was the idea there? Yeah, I wanted to create a platform for black tech Twitter. Um, you know, I have this hashtag going, I have this community. Um, like I want to be able to send them somewhere. I needed to centralize everything. And so I'm using Black Tech Pipeline to do that. So now what I'm doing is I'm highlighting um, influential people in the community in different um, fields of the tech industry. You know, I, I interview them. I interview people in Black Tech Twitter who are looking for jobs. So um, they're candidates. 
Uh, I post interviews on them. I also speak with different companies who are looking to diversify their environments because they're struggling to do that. So they come to me and they say, hey, like, I'm hiring for these roles, but I don't want just another, like, person who looks like me to fill it. Do you have candidates who may, you know, be interested? And then I go into the community and I ask, hey, I know you're looking for this. Um, I have this opportunity. Are you open to it? So I do that for a bunch of different companies. I do that for conferences, for speaking opportunities. Um, yeah, it's really just kind of bringing opportunity and shedding light on our community so people know that we're here, we exist, you have a support system, and um, also there's no pipeline problem because we're here, I'm showing you, you know? Right, exactly. Well, and, and it goes back to your point about bringing it to the community. You know, if you, mm -hmm. if, you know, people someone will go online and ask the question about black people and technology. They'll, they'll do some type of search. And, mm -hmm. you know, it helps that there's a page that they can land on that is actually filled with that type of information. You've already created it. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't require them to hunt, right? right? And then as more people get on Twitter, they're gonna see you and, and you know, black tech Twitter. And it, I've been putting you in all my, follow so <laughs> hopefully that helps yeah you know, I, I want to make sure I, I draw people no absolutely I'll, and it's it's shocking how many when that tweet first went out there were celebrities commenting on the thread they were saying whoa like and these are celebrities who aren't even in the tech industry they're just celebs who are like there's black people in tech like what you know so it's like, yes, we're here, we exist. And so you're just bringing awareness. People need to know this, it's so important. Right, and everyone, if you haven't already, make sure you're following the hashtag Black Tech Twitter. Make sure you follow um, Paris Athena on uh, Twitter as well. Um, my last question, and we kind of touched on it, it earlier. Um, what do you think are the hurdles that are keeping people of color, women, um, out of technology? Because I know, like, you and I are sitting on fairly decent Wi-Fi, right? Mm -hmm. And we have fairly dis decent cameras and laptops. Mm -hmm. So is it, an, is it an access issue or is it an awareness issue? What do you think? I think it's both, honestly. Um, you know, when I think about access, I think about black people. I think about, and not even just in America, I mean in all different countries where, you know, the Wi-Fi is terrible. There's just, the service service is just awful. Um, it's really hard to get laptops. It's really expensive. Um, and then, you know, just kind of even knowing the industry exists and, you know, the different, the different, uh, the different sectors of technology that exist. I, I don't, think a lot of depending on where you are I guess like a lot of people just don't know like I didn't know that coding existed until I was 23 24 like I'm 28 now come on like that's not good you know and I'm trying to imagine <laughs> how many people younger than me don't even know that this is a thing um I I have hope that because everything is so technology driven and everyone's always on their phones and they have you know, Twitter and Instagram, people, more people are hearing about coding, more people are hearing about um, black tech. I'm, I'm hoping that that's also segueing more black youth into this industry. Um, but it's definitely, there's definitely an access problem. Black people, you know, a lot of us come from poor communities. It's harder to get access to even like libraries where they even have computers. Some, some of these schools don't even, they, they struggle to get crayons. So I, I already know they don't have computers, you know, and that's the reality of being black in America and, and of course in other countries, but I'm speaking about America. Um, and then for women, I think we know that this is a male dominated industry and, you know, I've never been on a team where I had a woman. I never had a woman on my team since I've been in this industry. I've always been surrounded by men. I think it can be scary. It can be intimidating. You know, there are men who love to, um, you know, some of them don't know how to not cross boundaries. Some men 
you know, they don't know how to talk appropriately to women. They talk to us like we're either little girls or we're like puppies or, you know, it's just, and then the, the mansplaining exists. Like, it's just, it's intimidating, yeah, it's scary, and it's annoying. No one wants to go to work every day and deal with that. It's like toxic. It's a toxic environment. You don't want to live your life that way. I think- yeah that's definitely a problem. Right. And I mean, and you see it at conferences too. For me personally, most of the very smart people in tech, developers, cryptocurrency, uh, STEM in general are female. You know, I've learned so much from the women on, on Twitter that it just blows my mind. The things I didn't know that I learned from, from, from you all, you know, and I, I definitely have to say I appreciate you and I appreciate everyone else on the platform who who give their expertise, who point people in the right direction. And, you know, you guys are, are the, the guides for the rest of us. And, you know, and I, and I appreciate that. And I thank you so much for doing that. Oh, we thank you. <laughs> so we're going to wrap it up there. Where can we find you on social media? Um, you can literally find me everywhere at Paris Athena with two S's in Paris, um, and Black Tech Pipeline, you can find on Instagram and Twitter at BT Pipeline. Paris, I want to thank you again for, for speaking with me today, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people who get a lot of benefit from this interview. Once again, you're doing great things online, and you're, you're a big help to the community, and I can't thank you enough for doing that. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh, my God.